This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We talked already about the fun start to your Thursday with the Masters about to get underway after a rain delay. We talked some baseball over on the solo shop, but tonight there is some good stuff cooking as well because we have got a couple of national TV games in the NBA and a massive 10-game slate in the NHL as the regular seasons start to wind down. We're going to talk to Tom Vecchio today, getting his read on both the NBA and NHL and letting you know where he sees value for tonight at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here, as mentioned by Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Find his work at FanDuel Research and, of course, over on the Daily ISO for the remaining two days of the NBA regular season as well. Tom, pleasure to get you back on the show today. How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, super exciting time. The final literal few days of the NBA season, about a week and a half left for NHL. Uh, Masters starts today. Uh, MLB getting in full swing. My fantasy team is doing good. Thank you to Mookie Betts. Uh, I'm ready to roll. Did you uh, get any Masters bets in? I'll see. I'll occasionally see slacks from you about about some golf stuff. Anything for this week or no? Uh, I have Xander Shifley to win. Uh, I also have Tiger to miss the cut. It's a very Tom bet. Yeah, like if you if you'd ask me, not the Xander one. I don't know about like I. If you'd ask me predict what Tom would say to my question. I would have predicted Tiger to miss the cut. I think that was pretty predictable. Yeah, that's my my go to, and it didn't hit last year. But yeah. then he withdrew after like four or five holes in the third round. So I'm not going to say I was wrong. I just wasn't right at the right time. You were right at the wrong time. That's right. that's how we'll go with it for that one. I'm hoping to see Tiger play the weekend because it's always a little more fun, even if he's not super in contention. But uh, we'll see how things play out. Should be fun to see. First tee time's about to come up here in the very near future. We're going to talk to Tom about the NBA and NHL tonight in just one second. Then I'll talk NASCAR in Texas. A couple of top 10 bets on some teammates that I like later on as well. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast tomorrow. Massive UFC slate will break things down with Austin Swain getting his favorite bets for UFC 300, I believe. That is tomorrow here on Covering the Spread. That'll also be up on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus after the fact. If you want to watch FanDuel TV Plus, go to FanDuel.com slash watch and log in with your FanDuel account. You can watch Up and Adams, run it back. You can watch the Ringer shows, Covering the Spread, Daily ISO, Solo Shot, PGA Heat Check, all in the same place. And of course, you can also find FanDuel TV Plus on your Amazon Fire, Apple TV, or Roku devices as well. Tom, let's begin things over in the NBA, where you have a pair of TNT games for tonight. Of course, a FanDuel Sportsbook have a 30% same game parlay profit boost there. Get full details on that at FanDuel Sportsbook. That's specifically for the two NBA on TNT games, Knicks and Celtics, Pelicans at Kings. Let's start things off with the Knicks and the Celtics, Tom. Anything stand out to you in that game? So there's two perspectives for this game or, or two major things that need to be noted. Number one, the Celtics have four of their five starters listed as questionable. Jason Tatum, Drew Holiday, Jalen Brown, and Kristaps Porzingis all listed as questionable. Derek White is the lone starter that's not listed as questionable. The Celtics have nothing to play for. They've had not just the number one seed in the East, but the number one seed in the NBA locked up for quite some time at this point. The Knicks do have motivation to play and win. They can jump to potentially the two seed if the Bucks fall. They also want to secure the three seed. So we know what we're getting from the Knicks, which is a ton of minutes from their starters, and their best player, Jalen Brunson, has been phenomenal this season. He's pouring in the points. He's going for 30, 40. We saw a 60-point game from him a week and a half ago against the Spurs. So Brunson, over 37.5 points plus assists. This is a mark that you can very easily get to, especially if we see a depleted Celtics team. He's going up against their backups. So that's the first note. And and this is a very straightforward spot for Brunson. Again, he's going to be out there for 35, 38, 40 minutes. The next spot that I will say is Derek White. He has been awesome the second half of the season. When Tatum's out, he steps up and drops double-double. When Brown's out, same thing, Holiday Porzingis. So depending on who's available for the Celtics – because, again, they don't have priority to push their players out there. Derek White is a very key player for me tonight, depending on what the lines are. And we, it's just a wait and see. So if we can get a double um, 
a double double player performance bonus. He could do that in a losing effort. It doesn't matter for the Celtics. A points plus assist bet. That's where I'm going to be looking for Derek White. Okay, and the White props will not be up right now, given all the uncertainty around the Celtics injuries. So keep tabs on that. Potentially circle back to Derek White later on. But the one that Tom does like right now, Jalen Brunson, over 37 and a half points plus assists. That is minus 111 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Second NBA and TNT game for tonight is the Pelicans at the Kings right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Kings are favored by one. So it looks like a pretty fun game. Low total here. What yeah. are you looking for the second game tonight, Tom? This is an awesome game to have for the for a national TV game. Both teams need to play and win, which is not something we can say about the other games on the slate. Not Golden State, Portland, not Bulls, Detroit. Uh, you know, again, Knicks need to play. The, the Celtics don't. Both teams need to play and win. So lower total, tough defense, missed shots. Let's go to Trey Murphy for over six and a half rebounds. Sitting at plus 104, he stepped up nicely with Brandon. Brandon Ingram has been out of the lineup for a couple of weeks. Trey Murphy has stepped into some more minutes. Also, you know, filling the gaps. He's not necessarily a big, a big pure scorer just because Zion Williamson and CJ McCollum are still there. But he's doing his thing over this mark in seven out of the last 10 games. And again, if we are trending towards the under, that's what we're going to be seeing. For the Sacramento Kings, the total rebounds that they're allowing per game has jumped up recently. It was at 50 per game, which is actually pretty solid. That has jumped up to 57. Now, they're actually playing slower, and they're actually slightly better defense again. So it's not like they're playing worse defense and they're giving up more rebounds. It's a game environment thing where they're forcing more missed shots, so the game environments are a little, I don't want to say sloppier, but it, just the defense tends to lead to more rebounds, and that's what we're seeing. So more rebounds is good just because we're seeing tighter defense, and that's where Murphy has been excelling as of late. Now, you mentioned that the defense being good is part of that, but you also mentioned pace. And obviously, pace is a bad thing when it comes to a rebound market. Right. We have seen Murphy's number uh, so over 6.5 is now plus 108. So some movement towards the under here we've seen. Does that concern you at all? The fact that there has been a slower pace accompanying the rest of the components here? No, because his volume of minutes are still awesome in the mid to upper thirties. His role is extremely secure with that. And there's no reason that he shouldn't be out there. And that leads me to just the opportunity of him having this capability. So like long story, if this number moved to like plus plus one twenty, that's a different story. Red flag. Like, yeah. I, that, I, that's where I would, I would be a little more hesitant and that's right. where I would, Maybe try and find just went back to plus one hundred four right now, so no concern there. <laughs> okay, so that plus one hundred four. So we're we're kind of all over the place. I, I I think the the matchup and the priority of the game is too much to overcome. You know, one or two pace games. Yeah, it, it's something we have to take into consideration over the long term. But just more rebounds is just too good of a spot to pass up. All right, so Murphy is back to plus 104, over six and a half rebounds. That is for the Pelicans and the Kings. Plenty of other games in the NBA tonight as well, yeah. though, Tom. Where else is seeing value for tonight? Uh, that's the prop I spoke about on the Daily ISO, which is going to DeMar DeRozan for the Bulls. Over 33 and a half points plus assists. The Bulls need to win. They are on a two-game losing streak, and right now they are in danger of slipping into the 10th seed, which... Yeah, they're locked into the play-in, but the ninth seed is home court and the 10th is not. So they want to secure home court over the Hawks. DeMar DeRozan is awesome. He's a player that routinely gets to 30-plus points alone. So I love when a player can get to a combo market on just one of the stats. So when we know he can get to 35 points, the assists are just going to naturally be there when he picks up 5, 6, even 10 in some of these recent games. So uh, 27 and 10 game is not out of the question for him. A game is not out of the question tonight. Also a 30 and eight kind of game is not out of the question. So when we have an easy matchup against the Pistons and a team that needs to play and win like the Bulls do, DeRozan, as I've said it before about him, he's the monster of the mid range. It's not monsters of the midway for the Bulls. It's monsters of the mid range because he's so efficient from the field and doesn't need to rely on three pointers. He gets to the rim and gets it done. All right, so that is DeMar DeRozan, the points plus assist, assist prop at FanDuel Sportsbook. Over 32.5 is minus 125 right now. That's in addition to Trey Murphy, over 6.5 rebounds at plus 104, and Jalen Brunson, over 37.5 points plus assists. That is minus 111. Big slate in the NHL for tonight, Tom, as well. 10 total games. Let's start things off there by talking about the traditional markets. Any value for you in uh, puck lines, totals, etc. for tonight? Pittsburgh and Detroit, that number one game up there, under six and a half. Both of these teams are 
fighting for the exact same thing, which is the second wild card spot. Both teams are tied with 84 points. This is not a literal must win because, you know, we have about a week left in the season, but it's about as close as we can get to a must win game for both of these teams because obviously the head to head tiebreakers becomes a factor as we get to this late in the season when they're tied in points. Now, technically, uh, Detroit would have the tiebreaker with 38 regulation or 38 total wins. Pittsburgh's at 36. So this is where we see teams decrease the variance, which means fewer shot attempts overall. They, they want to like prevent this game from getting to a six to five game because that's just too much. So this game ending two to one, three to two on either side. I'm not going to be surprised. I think this game's a bit of a coin flip. You know, minus 150 isn't that heavy of a line, but just solid defense for both teams. That's why they're surging toward the playoffs, specifically the Penguins. Their defense has been solid. And the Red Wings, you know, even with the young team, they're, they're doing their part in, in terms of stepping up on defense. So I do not see this as an exciting game in terms of scoring, but the intensity is going to be awesome tonight. You mentioned about a week and a half left during the regular season for the NHL side of things. You talked a lot about how totals are decreasing this time of year because things tighten up. Uh, both these teams looking to get in the playoffs. So under six and a half right now, minus 128 at FanDuel Sportsbook. Do we see things ratcheting up even a bit more in this final week and a half? I know you've been talking about this for a month and a half now. Do we see it to an even greater extent for this final stretch run here? In terms of totals? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's tough to it's tough to say because like if you just scroll down a little bit for some of these other games, like Tampa's a, a big favorite, Florida's a massive home favorite. Right? So Florida has to play and win. The Blue Jackets have nothing to play for. So the Blue Jackets have a, a lot of younger players being called up. So sometimes the games get out of hand because the Panthers just run up to score and they're awesome. But I, when it comes to two teams that are in the same spot, like the Penguins and the, the Red Wings, that's where I stick with unders. So I try and shy away from games where teams right. have completely different uh, motivations, right? Where Detroit, uh, Detroit, the Devils, Jack Hughes just got ruled out for the rest of the season. They're eliminated from the playoffs. I wouldn't go near that game because if the Maple Leafs win that game six to two, just because the score they run up the score, that I'm not going to be surprised with. So I, I, and I would be willing to go to maybe alt under five and a half for some sure. of these really close games. Okay, so the one that Tom is recommending here for the Wings and the Penguins, that is under six and a half goals, minus 128 right now at FanDuel Sports, so potentially considering an alt under five and a half as well, so dig in to see what the market is saying for that one. What about player props? What are you seeing there for tonight? Uh, despite it being a 10-game slate, there's only two that I like as of now. Uh, that would be going to the New York Rangers with Vinny Trocek over two and a half shots on goal. Um, the Rangers top line center, Mika Zibanejad got hit kind of up high in their most recent game. He's not listed on the injury report. He's not listed on the concussion protocol yet. Although I am you know, not fully confident that they need to push him out there and play. So Trocek is the center on the second line. If Zibanejad would get ruled out, would not be surprised to see Trocek jump up to the first line. He's already averaging three shots on goal at home this season, which is higher than his 2.2 that he averages on the road. He's on the first power play unit, so he plays a very strong offensive role to begin with. Could be elevated if we do see Zibanejad out. It is a great matchup versus the Flyers, who right now are on an eight-game losing streak. They are absolutely floundering at this point in the season. And the Rangers are coming off of a loss. So we have a player who's better at home, potentially seeing an expanded offensive role against a very bad defense right now. Let's say we get injury news later on that Trocek will be on his traditional line for tonight. Would you still be okay with over two and a half at minus 128? Yeah, totally. He he is a mark he's getting to consistently. He already averages three shots on goal at home, like I said, and he's on the second forward line in the first power play without any injuries. So this is a mark that he can get to pretty standardly uh, with this matchup. Okay, so that's Vincent Trocek over two and a half shots on goal. That is minus 128 in the Rangers versus Flyers game. You mentioned there's a second prop you like as well. What's that one? Uh, that's going for the Islanders. And Matt Barzell to score a goal at plus 175 over his last six games. He has no goals despite having 20 shots on goal. He's on the first forward line for his power play. The Islanders have made this late season surge, and they're currently holding down not just the wild card. They've jumped into the three seed in the Metro, and this is a game that they have to win. Like, they are, their spot is not secure, and this is a very easy matchup versus the Habs tonight. So a player that's shooting at this high of a volume – and is simply not scoring is a player that I'm always going to buy into. 
especially with a team that's this hot right now. And he's picking plenty of assists. Like he's doing his normal thing on offense. He's just not scoring. So when we're seeing three and five shots on goal over this last six games and multiple games, I mean, we're just talking about bad puck luck here. So I will buy into variance now being on the good side of him scoring a goal. Okay, that is Matthew Barzal uh, over or to score a goal plus 175 at FanDuel Sportsbook in addition to the Vincent Trocheck over two and a half shots minus 128 and the Wings Penguins under six and a half goals minus 128 as well. That is Tom Vecchio. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Check out the daily ISO over on the FanDuel Research podcast feed for these final two weekdays of the regular season. And we'll have Tom on Monday to preview the play-in tournament and plenty of talk about the NBA and Stanley Cup playoffs as well tom appreciate the time as always enjoy today good luck with the xander bet bad luck to you at the tiger woods bet we'll talk to you once again soon thanks for having me all righty again find tom on twitter at tom underscore vecchio one as mentioned back with us again monday to preview the nba's play in tournament we'll dive into nascar in texas here in just one second but first still time to get in those masters bets as you can live bet this tournament you can bet some round two three balls etc etc and right now new customers get 100 dollars 150 dollars in bonus bets at fanduel sportsbook guaranteed with any winning or with any five dollar bet that's 150 bucks to use on outright winners round leaders longest drives and much more plus you'll get paid instantly when you bring home a major win this major season so don't wait you can visit fanduel.com to download america's number one sportsbook and swing for some green at Augusta must be 21 plus or 18 plus in DC and present in select states. First online real money wager only $10 first deposit required bonus issued as not with trouble bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas star casino, LLC gambling problem. Call 1-800 gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, DC, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Vermont, and Virginia. Call 1-800 next step or text next step to five, three, three, four, two in Arizona, one 789 Seven seven seven, or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9 with it in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. Or call 1-877-A-HOPE-N-Y or text HOPE-N-Y in New York. Let's talk now about some NASCAR in Texas for this weekend. No value for me right now in the outright market at FanDuel Sportsbook. There is a bit on Chris Bush for 28-1, a little bit on Eric Jones, 85-1. Personally, would rather wait until post qualifying to get there just because we have a lack of data on this track type so far this year. So, not going there for right now. Yesterday, when I wrote up my betting guide over at FanDuel Sportsbook, saw a lot of value on long shots to finish inside the top 10. It was Austin Dillon 12 to 1, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. at 20 to 1, and Zane Smith down at 25 to 1. All those have since moved. And unfortunately, the Zane Smith and Stenhouse bets no longer values based on my numbers, but the Austin Dillon one still is. Dillon is eight, plus 850 for a top 10, still like that, and I like his teammate too, 6-1 to one at FanDuel Sportsbook. Let's begin. That's uh, his teammate Austin Hill, not his teammate Kyle Busch. Uh, let's talk about Dillon's side first. Plus 850, which is 10.5% implied. I've got him at 14.9%. He is a former winner in Texas, partly or entirely due to strategy and it was during a different era of the cup series so i don't factor that in it's not my model basically at all uh but he he's still not terrible on this track type he's had only one top 20 so far this year but that came in las vegas which is the only other uh non-drafting mile and a half track on the schedule so far Last year, when Dylan's form was also pretty poor, he still finished inside the top 10 in Charlotte and Kansas. Charlotte is a uh, similar layout to Texas. Kansas, another mile and a half. He's had a putrid start to this year. has been caught up in early crashes uh, in a couple of different races. RCR in general, this team is hideous on short tracks right now, including Kyle Busch. So haven't expected a lot from him. So honestly... I feel like this is an overreaction to a lot of races that are not similar to what we'll have this weekend. 
This is a track where speed matters more relative to the driver than what we've seen in recent tracks, which is a good thing for this three team. So I think even down to plus 850, Dylan is still worth the bet. So that's what we'll go first. Still going to Dylan, even though he has shortened to plus 850 to finish inside the top 10. As mentioned, though, I also show value in his teammate, Austin Hill. Hill is doing a one-off race for Richard Childress Racing. He is a, in the Xfinity Series. Typically, you've heard me talk about him here on the show before. But in Xfinity, driving for RCR, he is really good on mile-and-a-half tracks. He won Las Vegas last year. He finished runner-up in Texas the year before that. Finished fourth in Vegas this year. So he's got skill. And my model likes him more as a driver than it likes Dylan. So his odds for a top 10 actually higher than Dylan's, both in the betting markets, but also for me. I've got Hill at 16.5% for a top 10. He's 6 to 1 right now, FanDuel Sportsbook. That's 14.3% implied. So I'm fine with that. So I did prefer things yesterday when I could get Stenhouse, Smith, and uh, Dylan at a better number. But for right now, if you're fresh to these betting markets, FanDuel Sportsbook, I do like Dylan plus 850. Austin Hill 6 to 1 as my favorite bets for the NASCAR Cup Series this week. We'll be talking Xfinity and Truck Series over on FanDuel Research uh, later on this week. If you want my full simulations for those two races, check those out, fanduel.com slash research. That's all that we have here for today. Big thank you once again to Tom Vecchio for swinging by, breaking down his thoughts on tonight's NBA and NHL slates. Find Tom on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can also follow FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Tomorrow, UFC 300 breakdown with Austin Swain. Looking forward to that. We'll talk to all of you then to get you ready for what should be a very fun card. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs> 